<coughs> distinguished delegates, we have the honor to have with us uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations Organization, Mr. Antonio Guterres, uh, who will now address you uh, on this topic. Thank you. The floor is Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we gather today as Muslims around the world observe the holy months of Ramadan. Ramadan is a time of reflection and solidarity. It is a moment to come together and uplift each other. But for many Muslims around the world, these are also times of anguish and fear. In the spirit of Ramadan, I've called for a silencing of the guns in Gaza and Sudan. Today, at this important event, I call on all political, religious, and community leaders everywhere and everywhere to join our plea. It's time for peace. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for nearly two billion Muslims across the world, Islam is a pillar of faith and worship, uniting people in every corner of the globe. And let us remember that it is, it is also a pillar of our shared history. For centuries, Muslims have been a crucial source of culture, philosophy, scholarship, and science. From the enormous influence of Avicenna, the great physician and philosopher, whose interpretations of Plato and Aristotle helped shape the development of Western European philosophy, to the Muslim mathematician and astronomer Al-Khwarizmi, responsible, responsible for delivering Indo-Arabic numerals and the father of algebra, to the father of rationalism, Averroes, whose groundbreaking commentaries bridged Islamic and Western thought, to the countless contributions of Muslims across every field, from science, technology, and medicine, to literature, art, music, and architecture, Excellencies, today's event shines a light on a vicious plague that represents a complete denial and ignorance of Islam and Muslims and their undeniable contributions. The plague of Islamophobia. Around the world, we see a rising tide of anti-Muslim hate and bigotry, and that can come in many forms, structural and systemic discrimination socioeconomic exclusion, unequal immigration policies, unwarranted surveillance and profiling, restrictions in accessing citizenship, education, employment, and justice. These and other institutional barriers violate our shared commitment to human rights and dignity. And they also perpetuate a vicious cycle of exclusion, poverty, and disenfranchisement that echoes across generations. Meanwhile, decisive rhetoric and misrepresentation are propagating stereotypes, stigmatizing communities, and creating an environment of misunderstanding and suspicion. This can lead to an increase in harassment and even outright violence against Muslims, rising accounts of which are being reported by civil society groups in countries around the world. Some are shamefully exploiting anti-Muslim hate and the exclusionary policies for political gain. We must call this what it is, hate, plain and simple. And purveyors of hate speech are misusing the most powerful megaphone in history to amplify and spread their despicable ideologies, social media. Online platforms have become breeding grounds for extremist ideologies and harassment. This not only deepens divisions, it fuels real-life violence. And sadly, this alarming trend is part of a wider pattern of supremacist ideologies and attacks against Jews, minority Christians, communities, and many others. Hatred of one group fuels hatred of another. Hate normalizes hate. Hate destroys the fabric of our societies and hate undermines the equality, understanding, and respect for human rights upon which a peaceful future and a peaceful world depend. Excellencies, 
We cannot stand on the sidelines while hatred and bigotry run wild. Today's event reminds us that we all have a responsibility to confront and root out the scourge of anti-Muslim bigotry. Political leaders must lead the way and foster social cohesion, not fear. Governments must condemn inflammatory discourse and safeguard religious freedom, in particular for minorities. And I'm grateful to religious leaders who are working together to promote interface dialogue. Digital platforms must moderate and prevent the spread of hateful content while protecting users from harassment. Artificial intelligence must reduce biases and stereotypes, not reproduce and amplify them. And all of us must do our part to dismantle the walls of intolerance and division. In cities, towns and villages, in schools, in the street and online, everywhere, and anywhere. Let us all pledge to call out anti-Muslim bigotry, no matter where we see or hear it. Excellence. Excellencies, Muslims hail from all countries, all cultures and all walks of life. They represent the wonderful diversity of the human family. As we stand united on this international day to combat Islamophobia, let us renew our commitment to upholding the principles of equality, dignity, human rights and respect. These principles are the cornerstone of our shared humanity and of the United Nations Charter. Let us cultivate empathy and invest in social cohesion by embracing diversity as a strength rather than a source of division. Finally, let us stand in solidarity with Muslims from around the world in this holy month of Ramadan and every day. Together we can build peaceful, just and inclusive societies where every individual, regardless of their faith, can live in peace and in harmony. I thank you. Uh, I thank the Secretary General.